Welcome to another Global Fact. I am Freddy Azoy, the Program Manager at the International Fact Checking Network. As a Program Manager, I am in charge of several programs and projects. One of those is the IFC Encoder Principles. Today, I will be giving you a snapshot of the application process. This presentation will have three main components. A brief history about the IFCN, an introduction to the principles, the application process, and what happens after you become a verified signatory to the IFC encoder principles. Let's begin with a brief history about the IFCN. The International Fact Checking Network is a unit of the Pointer Institute dedicated to bringing together fact checkers around the world. The IFCN was launched in 2015, September, to support a booming crop of fact checking initiatives by promoting best practices and exchanges in the field. The IFC Encoder Principles is a series of commitments organizations abide by to promote excellence in fact checking. We believe nonpartisan and transparent fact checking can be a powerful instrument of journalism. Encoder Principles History Founded back in late 2015, the IFCN has been advocating for higher standards among the global fact-checking community. To fulfill that purpose, a code of principles for fact-checkers have been developed to and introduced to the community in 2016. Code of principle was immediately signed up by 35 organizations from 27 different countries after its launch in 2016. As the community grew, to ensure the changes in the code are fitting in different parts of the world, we reached out to fact checkers worldwide over six months. And in December 2019, they ratified dozens of detailed changes. This new code came into effect in April 2020. First, the new code included new rules on who can become a signatory. It banded state-controlled media demand signatories to focus primarily on public interest issues and requires a longer testing period. Second, it's rare for every political party to generate the same number of checkable claims. Signatories must prove they select what to check based primarily on the reach and importance of the claims themselves, not falling prey to false balance. At the same time, they must explain how their choices adhere to the principle of nonpartisanship. We then work with external independent assessors to review the evidence from the applicants. Third, we have introduced standards for sourcing and methodology that range from a quality of sources to rigor in how claims are tested. These standards ensure greater, greater fairness and accuracy. Fourth, parent media companies that want a fact-checking unit to be a signatory must follow an honest and open corrections policy themselves. This ensures the parent company works in concert with the signatory in disseminating accurate information. Fifth, the new code has 31 criteria that applicants are judged on. Lastly, we want the fact-checkers audience to be more involved in checking the fact-checkers work too and encouraging the signatories to publish a summary of the IFCN assessment in their own language. Let's take a look at these principles. Principle number one, a commitment to nonpartisanship and fairness. Signatories, signatory organizations, fact check claims using the same high standards of evidence for all claims. They do not concentrate their fact checking on any one side. They consider, to, they consider the reach and importance of the claims they select to check. They declare relevant interests. They follow the same essential process for every fact check and let the evidence dictate the conclusions. Signatories do not advocate or take policy positions on the issues they fact check. Principle number two. A commitment to standards and transparency of source. Signatories provide enough detail of all sources used to enable users to replicate their work, except in cases where sources' personal security can be compromised. 
In such cases, signatories provide as much detail as possible. Signatories use primary sources wherever, whenever it's possible and always check a considerable source against their other sources. Signatories identify interests of any sources they quote where they might reasonably be considered relevant to the claim they fact checked. Principle number three, a commitment to transparency of funding and organization. Signatory organizations are transparent about their funding sources. If they accept funding from another organization, they ensure that the funders have no influence over the conclusions the fact checkers reach in their reports. Signatory organizations publish their site, publish on their site the professional backgrounds of all key figures in the organization and explain the organizational structure, setting out how and by whom editorial control is exercised. Signatories may choose not to identify the authors of individual fact checks where editorial is exercised by a senior editorial team. Signatories clearly indicate, signatories clearly indicate a way for users to communicate with them. Principle number four, a commitment to standards, transparency, of methodology. Signatories work to the highest professional standards and explain the methodology they use to select, research, write, and publish their fact checks. They encourage users to send claims to fact check and are transparent on why and how they fact check. Principle number five, a commitment to an open and honest corrections policy. Signatories are committed to accuracy and publish and promote their corrections policy and follow it to the letter. Where credible evidence proves they have made, made a mistake of worthy of correction, they correct it clearly, transparently, in the line with their corrections policy. Seeking so far as possible to ensure that users see the corrected version. If the signatory is a fact-checking unit of a publishing or media company, it is required of a signatory status that the parent company has and adheres to an open and honest corrections policy. Eligibility to be a signatory. IFC and signatory status may be granted to legally registered organizations set up for the purpose of fact-checking that regularly publish nonpartisan reports on the factual accuracy of statements by public figures, promote institutions, and widely circulate claims in text, visual, and other formats focused primarily on claims related to public interest issues. IFCN signatory status may not be granted to organizations whose editorial is controlled by state, a politician, or a political party. It may, however, be granted to organizations that receive funding from state or political sources to carry out public service journalism if the IFCN assessor determines there is a clear, ambiguous separation of editorial control from the state or political influence. Applications are assessed by independent assessors for compliance with 31 criteria. Their assessment is reviewed by the IFCN Advisory Board to ensure fairness and consistency across the network. Now I'm going to walk you through the application process and provide tips to improve your application. Here are the next steps of the application process. I want to first explain this part in order for the other sections of the website to be clear. I will be sharing my screen right after this section. Please follow the instructions closely and provide all necessary details. Incomplete applications cannot be submitted. If this is your first application, we strongly recommend you read the application guideline before submitting your application in order to get the sense of the best practices around the world. The information shared through this form will be made publicly available for your application before after your application is verified to become an IFCN signatory. The application fee is $200. This fee offsets some of the cost of hiring an external assessor. 
There will be an additional $100 if the application needs a second phase review. This will be communicated uh, through our communication channels if necessary. After the application is submitted, the application will then be assessed by external assessors. They are selected for their expertise in journalism and disciplines related to fact-checking in the region where their aspiring signatory operates. They are paid $350 per assessment by the ISCN and will be comp compensated $100 extra if the application needs a second review. The assessors evaluate each application using the guideline and the recommended and then recommend their approval or rejection. The third and final step, the IFCN advisory board members will evaluate the assessor's review of the applicant organization. An application is only accepted when the IFCN advisory board members confirms the findings with at least six favorable votes. In a few minutes, I will be talking about what happens after you become an IFCN signatory. Now I will walk you through the IFCN Coder Principles website. Give me a moment to share my screen. Now that I have my sh screen shared, I want to walk through the website with you uh, to show you some of the important aspects of the website in order for you to be able to be familiar with it once you are on the website itself. Once you are on the landing page, on the top right corner, you will see a registration form. This is where you will be registering your organization into the system in order to start the application process. Over here at the very top, you will see an about section. The very first box on the left-hand side will be telling you a bit about the IFCN code of principles. Once it opens up, here we go. Uh, some All of these sections we have already talked about at the very beginning. There's the eligible, how, uh, what is it to be eligible to be able to apply to become a signatory and principle one, two, three, and four and five as follows. And below each principle, you will see some additional information regarding the application uh, questions. Uh, these sections uh, are sections that pertain to, cer uh, to certain sections within the applications. So please take a look at this and read them thoroughly. At the very bottom of this page, you will see the most important aspect of your whole entire application process, the application guidelines. Take a look at the application guidelines, absorb it, you know, uh, if you have questions, write them down, jot them down, and then and then send them to us. And if we're able to help you, we'll guide you through those questions. But absolutely take some time and look at the 35 pages and see what you need in order to in order to update on your website, uh, uh, add certain sections on the website to adhere to the principles of the IFC and Coder principles. Coming back to the website, I'm going to go back to the main page um, and click about again. On the right hand side, there's a box that says the advisory board and our pool of assessors. I'm going to start with the, uh, the pool of assessors first because the process of the application, as I said a few seconds ago, a minutes ago, um, you submit your application. After you submit your application, it is then said, sent to a pool of assessors. These, pool, these individuals are individuals who know the fact-checking ecosystem well, who understand uh, media, journalism, who are uh, professionals of journals, researchers, or media consoles. These individuals have wide variety of expertise in, in journalism and in media. The assessors who will be assigned to your application have to be an assessor who knows the language, who understands the culture, who understands the history, who understands the political environment in the country, who understands the laws within that country. So we do our best in order to find a suitable assessor for your application. Once your application is completed, as said before, it will be sent to the advisory board. The advisory board has 11 active verified signatories and four independent board members. Of the 15 advisory board members, only 11 vote. And these are from the active signatories. Now, 
when I usually meet a new organization, I stress the fact that this community, this organization, the International Fact Checking Network, was was made, was put together, was founded from the organizations around the world. So the community is IFCN. The IFCN is not its community. The community is IFCN. So for that reason, the board members have to reflect the community. And for that reason, we have chosen several members of the community to represent uh, represent new organ uh, to be able to vote on new applications when a new applicant has applied to the IFC and quota principles. So as you can see, we have members from the US, from India, from Spain, from Nigeria, from the Philippines, from the again from the US, from India, from from Argentina, from England, from South Africa to 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 the Balkans in and each member of the organizations uh, have one vote for each application. In order for your application to go forward, you would need at least seven of the uh, seven approval votes from this from this from this board. Going back to the website, before applying to the applications. My advice is, at the very top, there's a, there's a section for signatories. Take a look at this. I, it's, it's, it's very beneficial for new organizations. What I usually tell here to new organizations, let's say you're coming from the Middle East, right? Or you're coming from uh, uh, Central Asia, Southeast Asia. Take a look at this list. Look at the organizations that might be already in your country. See the work that they do. See what the method, what their methodology looks like. See what their corrections policy looks like. Digest their organizational structure. Usually, and most of the time, as a person who who founded its own fact checking organization, um, it's not easy to build most of these um, uh, structures from the very bottom. But this network was formed. To, to share our best practices. So here it is, over a hundred organizations where you can look at and see how they operate. For example, for example, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so full facts, when you go into full facts um, profile, you'll be able to see where this organization is from, what is their website, the language they operate in, and you'll be able to see, and most importantly, each application they have submitted over the years. I say over the years because you would have to resubmit your application every year in order to be, uh, in order to continue to become, in order to continue as a verified signatory. I wanted to show you this application, not because I wanted to show you this application, but I wanted to show you this application because of the components within the application that's going to guide you through your application process itself. So the application over here is the very same questions that you will come across when you sign in into your registration and go into your dashboard to create your application. As you can see, each question is laid out. The answer from the applicant organization is there and the answer of the assessor is there as well. So for all 31 criteria, you'll be able to see the answer from the applicant and the answer from the assessor. I like to show this to new organizations because it allows them to, to come up with ideas of how to ex, uh, answer some of these questions. One thing I would like to really stress and stress to, to the letter is Please, please do not only place links in your application. Tell me what that link is about. Tell us what we're going into. Uh, not because, uh, yeah, we could simply click links and go to that and see what it is. But these applications, remember, are public documents. And for individuals who are first seeing your application, let them know what that link is about. 
please use complete sentences. Again, when you click on signatories, it is a great place for you to be able to familiarize yourself with the application questions, the types of answers to the questions, and, 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 and you'll be able to see the reflection of the assessor's comments to the answers. Take your time with this, take a look at it. Again, if you have any questions, we're always here for you to be able to reach out to. A moment ago, I had gone through this. Uh, the apply section at the very top gives you clear instructions of what each step entails. And lastly, our complaints policy. This is where individuals can come and complain about uh, an issue that, that there might be regarding your fact check or a violation of your organizations uh, to, the, to the IFCN Code of Principles. That being said, please absolutely take a, take a look at this website. It's very important um, for you to be able to absorb uh, what is, is, is needed from you when you come to the application process. There's one more thing I would like to show. Every year we have the Code of Principles Transparency Report here. When you click this, you'll see a yearly report of, of what has been going on with the IFCN Code of Principles. If we as the IFCN is asking for transparency of our organizations, we have to be as transparent as ourselves as well. So um, this is the website. Take a look at it, look at every link in it. Again, I feel the most two important things here is the guidelines and the signatories list. Look at them, uh, look at their organizations, look at how they run things. Uh, it gives you ideas uh, to, to be able to, uh, you know, uh, put into your application, uh, build up your capabilities as an organization to come up to the standards of the IFC and Code of Principles. Now I'm going to go back to our slides and then we will continue. Give me a moment. So what happens after you become an IFCN verified signatory? Um, one of the most important things is some of the things that we offer, which is our communication channels. I would say this is the most important tool we offer our community. These channels tackle a wide range of topics from research, fact checking, grant opportunities, promotion of the work we do. And my favorite, of course, is when a fact checker reaches out to fact checkers about a fact check they're working on. And it's amazing to see how the community rallies uh, quickly to help each other out. There are tools that we offer our verified signatories that, that, that help fact checkers on a daily basis from design to statistical data uh, sources that they are able to find. Grant and fellowship opportunities. These grant opportunities are the most are most of the time only open to verified signatories to boost the capabilities of organizations and expand their fact checking reach. And of course, the Global Fact Conference. Take a look at all the entirety of the conference and, and absorb them because it's very important for you to be able to bring this back to your teams. Um, as a person who who went to a global uh, a global fact event in 2015 in London. Um, it was an eye-opening opportunity for me. It, brought, it gave me a lot of motivation and I brought a lot of ideas back, back home to my team to implement within our own fact-checking organization. And last but not least, it is a prerequisite for the, uh, the IFCN Code of Principles is a prerequisite for social media platforms fact-checking organizations that adhere to the code of principles have an opportunity to work with several social media organizations to combat misinformation on their platform. Well, there it is, guys. I've spoken for maybe over 30 minutes now. I'm sorry for keeping you this long, uh, but there was a lot of information that I wanted to, to give you uh, in order for you to be more comfortable on your way to become a verified IFCN signatory to the Code of Principles. Um, 
There are some useful links below. Check them out. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always here. Um, it might take some time these days for me to quickly answer back, but I usually answer them in a timely fashion. And I'm hoping to see you a part of the community. Uh, the bigger we get, the larger the community gets, the stronger we have, the stronger we get in fight in the fight of misinformation. So have a gl great global fact. Be safe. Be well.